consider this imaginary coordinate axis x, y, and z. And along the z-axis lies a line of charge. It has a total charge of positive Q from z equals a to z equals negative a. Let's calculate the electric field at point P on the y-axis. Apparently, this point P is situated at distance y from the origin. Recall that the linear charge density lambda is equal to infinitesimal charge dq divided by infinitesimal length dl. In this discussion, we assume that the line charge density is uniform all throughout the distribution. So in totality, lambda is also equal to capital Q, the total charge, divided by the total length, which in our case is equal to 2a. To use our integral equation 2.3, we need to come up with an integration variable that can be evaluated to consider all the contributions of the infinitesimal element of the charge distribution. To do this, we divide the line of charge into infinitesimal element d sub z, for example this one, d sub z, which is a distance z from the origin and a distance r. from point P. Its electric field on point P is DE, which is at an angle theta below the y-axis. Based on the figure, the distance r from D sub z to point P is equal to square root of side of the triangle, which is y and this other side of the triangle which is z so r is equal to square root of y squared plus z squared now again if this is theta the angle of d sub e with respect to y axis then obviously this is also theta notice that from this figure we can have expression for cosine theta and sine theta so from the figure cosine theta is equal to adjacent which is y divided by hypotenuse which is r so this is y squared plus z squared squared similarly sine theta based on the figure is equal to z over square root of y squared plus z squared let's directly write the equation for this vector de by starting with the general equation 2.2 that we have derived from previous video Now, based on these equations and this one, we can replace r here with square root of y squared plus z squared and dq here with lambda dl. But lambda here is also equal to q over 2a, so we can replace this lambda here with q over 2a. Now going back to the figure, notice that DE can be broken down into components which is DE sub Y and another component that is perpendicular with respect to Y axis which is DE sub Z. Now notice that just by looking at these vectors alone, we know that Y component of D sub E is along the positive Y axis. So when we write down the y component electric field, it should be in the direction of positive y hat. While when presenting the z component of the electric field DE, we observe that this component points along the negative z axis. So later, when we represent the z component of D sub E, we include the direction negative z hat in its vector form. When we write the vector form of DE, it will have a component along the y-axis, which is d sub e sub y times y hat, and another component that is along the z-axis. 
which from our figure above, the direction is along the negative z hat. We already have an expression for dE, this one. And to get dE sub y and dE sub z, notice that dE sub y is just dE cosine theta and dE sub z is just dE sine theta. So let me rewrite it here. Let's evaluate dE sub y first. dE sub y is equal to dE, which is this expression. By the way, dL here is actually dz because d sub L is along the z-axis. We multiply dE with this expression. So in this equation, z is the integration variable while y is constant here. We integrate this expression from negative a to a based on our figure because the line of charge runs from negative a to a. Notice that this integral here is in the form of integral of du divided by u squared plus a squared raised to three halves. This is actually equal to u divided by positive minus a squared square root of u squared plus a squared plus a constant which can be zero or not. Now I've shown the solution of this equation in a separate video. The link is in the description box below. Let's now solve the y component of the electric field. E sub y is therefore equal to q over 4 pi epsilon naught times 1 over y square root of a squared plus y squared. Let's now solve the z component of the electric field. The variable of integration here is z, so we could actually take out all the constants out of the integral sign. Now notice that the integral here is in the form of integral of u du divided by u squared plus a squared raised to 3 halves 
And this integral here is actually equal to negative 1 divided by square root of u squared plus a squared. I've shown the solution of this equation in a separate video. The link is in the description box below. The integral of e sub z is therefore equal to By the way, the integral above is evaluated from negative a to positive a based on our figure. So this is evaluated from negative a to a. Now this term here becomes positive, so basically we have negative 1 over square root of a squared plus y squared plus 1 over square root of a squared plus y squared. So basically this term is 0. Now if we return to our figure, notice that due to symmetry, we can have another infinitesimal element here that can project an electric field at point P which produces another opposite DE sub Z component which cancels out the Z component that is directed downwards. Again, due to symmetry, the DE sub Z components at point P cancel out. Let me now write the electric field at point P. Now this is the expression for the electric field produced by a line segment. Now we would like to know what happens if we have an infinite line of charge. So returning to our figure, imagine this line of charge is not confined to z equals a and z equals negative a. In other words, the length of this line of charge extends from positive infinity to negative infinity. So let's rewrite this equation here on another page. Let's rewrite this equation in terms of line charge density because when you have an infinite line of charge, what matters is the line charge density and not the total charge Q. So remember that line charge lambda is equal to, from our previous equation, it's actually equal to Q over 2A. This time, I'll multiply this equation with 1. So 1 over a divided by 1 over a is 1. So I'm doing this to get rid of the variable a because it's actually meaningless. Because 2a is the length of line segment we are considering. But this time, since we are extending the line of charge from positive infinity to negative infinity, then we would like to have an expression that doesn't contain the variable a. Remember that from our previous discussion, 2a is the length of the line segment. But since we are considering an infinite line of charge, we will be replacing a later with a value of infinity. And there we will use L. Hopital's rule and see the result when we plug infinity to a. When the length of the line segment A approaches infinity, then the expression y squared divided by a squared approaches 0. So somehow, we can approximate the y squared over a squared here to 0. Now let me redraw our figure here. So we have an infinite wire. In the middle of this, 
wire is the y-axis and this is point P that sits on the y-axis. The distance of point P to the origin is y and consider this as the general distance of point P to the source charge which is R. So we consider y here as an r because from our previous discussion, r represents the measurement point towards the source charge which in our case, the source charge is the infinite wire. So I can rewrite our electric field as And its direction is supposed to be y hat, but in general, since I'm using the variable r, I'll just use r hat here to generalize our expression. This is our expression for the electric field due to an infinite line of charge. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching!